Physics first fail. That is the topic of today's video. My name is Craig Meister. I'm a college admissions coach. You can learn more about me and how you can work with me one-on-one -on -one throughout the entire college admissions process on my website, which is collegemeister.com. Trends come and go, and that's why you should always stay above the trends. Uh, and one of those trends in recent years has been having physics come first in the sequence of high school science courses available at many high schools in the United States and even around the world. That, that means that unlike how things used to be for many, many years when biology was followed by chemistry, which was followed by physics as the three meat and potatoes science courses that students definitely took by the time they graduated, we have been living in a world of late in which physics comes first. Now, this form of physics, for it to be offered in ninth grade in most cases, uh, is a physics that is known as conceptual physics. But what that basically means is non-math-based physics, at least non-serious math-based physics, and therefore, the type of physics one can explore in ninth grade in a physics first high school uh, is far less complicated, far less rigorous, frankly, than the type of physics one encounters in a physics later environment in which you can take physics after also having already completed biology and chemistry, and also in your math sequence, you're probably at a point where you're at a higher level of math and can integrate more math concepts and more math uh, work into your, your physics curriculum, and in some cases, even a calculus-based physics type experience, which you can get in um, you know, some, some AP physics courses, obviously, uh, IB, uh, HL physics and other bespoke physics courses that are offered at high schools all around the world that are advanced physics courses uh, that are not necessarily aligned with any particular uh, out of the box curriculum like you would find it with you know the IB or, or AP. So why am I saying physics first fail is the topic I'm covering today? Well, because ultimately, uh, why was this done? I mean, let's be honest. It was done for a lot of reasons, but one of the reasons it was done is to get a lot of high school students get having physics on their transcript by the time they graduate, but it, but a physics that they could actually do well in because, you know, the watering down of the curriculum over the last 25, 30 years is, and the, and the quality of expectations expected of students is such that, you know, physics would have otherwise gone by the wayside in many high schools had it not been moved to first in the sequence uh, because it ha had it been actually the old physics that was expected of students, uh, especially students are looking at selective colleges and universities, which is, of course, my bread and butter and why maybe you're probably watching this video. Uh, many students these days would cry out in agony having to go through that. And so a lot of high schools, because they knew they weren't as rigorous anymore, they were giving A's away like candy. Uh, they are happy to subscribe to a physics first sequence in science because that allows the students to get physics on their transcript, no harm, no foul. Then they move on to, uh, you know, the other sciences. Uh, but physics, which is a hard class traditionally, is not ninth grade physics. When you take physics in ninth grade, you are taking conceptual physics. Now, that is a course that could be quite enough for many individuals in their lifetime as it relates to intersecting their interests and time with physics. But if you are serious about getting into a selective college or university and doing well at that university, especially if you're pursuing a STEM major or pre-med track, I'm here to tell you that it's not enough to simply go into high school, take physics, then take, sometimes they go do chem and then biology now, but Oftentimes it's physics, then biology, then chem, and then some other science at some point, maybe environmental science, God forbid. I did a whole other video about environmental science. That is not enough to be a sterling candidate for admission to a selective college or university at which the STEM degrees are in high demand. No, 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 no. You cannot assume you were finished with physics just because you finished it in ninth grade. No, you must go on and try to fit in to 12th grade what I would call, and I know I will get howls of hatred 
for saying this, a real physics course, a real physics course that actually requires math and proficiency with higher end math that many very smart high school students are able to perform by the time they get to 11th and or 12th grade. But they certainly are often not as well prepared to engage in such math in ninth grade. And therefore, physics is basically a rump of what real physics is when it's offered in ninth grade. Colleges that are selective, particularly selective for STEM fields like engineering, computer science, pre-med related, you know, th- related majors, this is the bread and butter. They know this too. You sure as heck better know this as well. So you can't most likely change high schools that you attend. And therefore, you can't necessarily, within the course of the next few weeks or months or even maybe years, change how your school sequences out its science courses. But just know this. If you go to a physics first high school and you got an A in conceptual physics, but it was called physics, maybe it was called conceptual physics, and then you got an A in biology, and then you got an A in in chemistry. Notice I'm not even talking about advanced this or that because I'm just talking about, just to make this easy, the names of the courses. Uh, you need to still take physics again at an advanced level in 12th grade to have the most compelling application to get in to the most selective colleges in your area of interest as a potential STEM major. Now, it is also true that I would encourage you to be in the advanced track across the board. Uh, I don't know how a school could call any ninth grade physics class advanced because it is an insult to the physics that is still offered probably at that high school, but definitely at other high schools in 11th and 12th grade. So it would be very much a oxymoron to call a ninth grade physics course advanced physics or any such scholars physics or gifted and talented physics, but maybe they do that. But what I want you definitely to be on track for is by the time you're in biology and chemistry, you should be on the advanced track so that you can be in an advanced course, regardless of the official branding of it, uh, in physics by the time you are in 12th grade. This is going to open up many more admissions doors for you than if you just sit there and take it from your high school and basically say, oh, I took chemistry, I took physics in ninth, I took bio in 10th, I took chemistry in 11th. Now I don't even have to take a a science in 12th. Or if I take a science, I got to look for one with a different name like environmental science or, uh, you know, some high schools will have an ecology course or, you know, some other courses, which are, again, I'm not insulting any of these disciplines of science. I'm simply saying you didn't actually complete the real three-course sequence when you completed conceptual physics. You completed conceptual physics. Colleges know that if it's offered in ninth grade, regardless of its name, that it is conceptual physics. All right. If you go to a high school that is not, thankfully, physics first, thank the Lord high above for that, because most likely in ninth grade, you're taking bio, then 10th grade chem, then 11th grade physics. And it's more likely that even if that's not a calc based physics, it's at least a more rigorous physics course than a ninth grade offering of physics. But if you could find yourself in a situation where you can take a calc based physics as your one and only physics class, and still succeed in it, I would definitely recommend to time it out in such a way where you're taking bio, then chem, then physics, and they're all advanced. And sometimes the only way in which to do this, depending on your current math trajectory and placement, would be to be in some other science, sort of an introduction to physical sciences or something in ninth grade. And many smart schools offer this. And then you go into the more meat and potatoes, as I call it, uh, rigorous advanced science courses on the track from 10th through 12th grade so that, you know, you can do calc-based physics in 12th. Now, again, every high school is different in terms of where you are in math, where you are in science at any given time, and what courses are offered. So definitely check with your high school to determine what is on offer for you. But the big takeaway I want you to have from this call is that you will have failed to take the most rigorous science course sequence in high school if you are satisfied by simply taking physics in ninth grade regardless of what they call that physics class, whether it be called straight physics or advanced physics or conceptual physics, that is not physics-y enough or uh, frankly difficult enough to satisfy the most selective colleges when they are looking at science curricula uh, uh, taken by 
high school students that are going to be the most compelling to get into their classes in any given year. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and also subscribe to my channel. By all means, tell your friends and physics student friends about it as well. Uh, also, by all means, if you want to learn more about my approach and philosophy with not just physics, but other courses, you may want to work with me one-on-one -on -one so that you can be best positioned for selective college admission by the time you get to your final year in high school. And to do that, you should go to my website, which is collegemeister.com. Until next time, stay safe, stay well, and most importantly, stay stress-free throughout the entire college admissions process.